Good afternoon, Greg Thames. I hope um, you had a good lesson yesterday and you are familiarizing yourself slowly again with practical work. Yesterday was actually still a little bit more on the theory side. We looked at what a variable is. We looked at the different data types and the five that we specifically looked at was string, integer, real, boolean, and character, also called char. Um, but I've also mentioned a sixth one that becomes important within your grade 10 year, which is t-date. So those six um, data types we looked at. Then we looked also yesterday at how do we name those variables. Very simple, if it's a string, we take the first letter of the data type, which is S, and then we give our variable a descriptive name. Today, we are going to look at how to declare these variables in our program. The, the, the word declaration means kind of creating. We are, we are creating, or we, 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 we're saying, we're telling the program, hey, listen, this variable, create this variable in the RAM, for us to store values in. So um, it is, we're going to cover um, chapter 3.3 on pages 41 to 44. I will be doing together with you activity, um, the guided activity 3.2 on page 42, as well as the guided activity 3.3. Um, and then you will have, I'm asking you to do the activity 3.3 on page 44. You will actually, coming back to this, um, there's an example 3.1 that I actually want you to complete as well because for the first time this term, you're actually going to open Delphi and you're going to um, try out the things that we are learning today. So let's open the practical book on page 41, declaring variables and components. So it's for me very difficult to, you know, Sandy, I'm going to actually open um, Delphi just now as well and show you actually within Delphi the different places where we can declare variables. Um, but it's difficult for me not to jump ahead, um, but to keep, actually keep it um, simple so that um, you are not... I don't want to confuse you. So, um, before you can use the variable, you have to tell Delphi to, um, you know, reserve some memory where that value can be actually stored. So what you need to specify is both the name of the variable as well as the data type of that variable. So we the syntax, which means the, kind of the structure, um, has the following. So on the event handler of a button, let's say you double click on the button, um, that's a procedure on click of the button. Before the begin, you we have a keyword, keyword called var, which stands for variable. We will give our variable a name, colon, and then the data type. S name, colon, string, semicolon. I number, comma, I amount, comma, I um, number two, colon, integer. So we can list variables with the same data type separated by a comma in order um, so we don't need to have separate lines for them we can just list them so very important the var statement is used to tell Delphi that variables will be declared variables are declared by typing the variables name followed by a colon and followed by the variables type and then a semicolon to end the line variable definitions are indented, 
Um, so we have bar and then we do an indentation so that it looks neat and it's easier to read. Multiple vari variables, the same type can be declared in one line as long as they are separated by commas. So here's an example. R total real, I minimum, comma, I maximum, integer, S name string, C gender, char, B valid, boolean. So those are the five um, data types that we looked at yesterday. And yes, um, we have an example of them. So it reserves it in the RAM. This is a picture of the RAM, just in case you did not notice. We have our name and we have our value, which is then stored in that little box. Um, that is in the right um, guided activity declaring variables so using a pen on paper I obviously do not have a pen but I have a digital pen so I'm gonna do this with you now you need to use descriptive names and decide on a suitable data type for each variable so um, let's or, yeah, I'm going to just quickly bring my pin over. All right, so um, question 3.2.1, 0 0.39. So look at that. We, I can just start typing here. Maybe that's a little bit big. I can make that a bit smaller. So we would declare, so it's, we know already it's a real number because it's decimal places. So I'm going to say R. Um, what could that be? R 0 0.379, that's it's very, very little. So um, R interest, interest rate. And you can see I'm using I as capital and R as capital. That's our camel case that we talked about yesterday. And then it's of data type real, and we use a semicolon. Okay, you got that? Okay, I'm going to um, do another one over here. Um, true is a Boolean. So I'm going to say B, and then I will say um, found. Like I'm looking for something. Have I found it? Yes or no. True or false. Um, and that's yesterday, I think I was um, wondering about what other words than true and false and zero and minus one is there. Yes and no would be another word for, um, for that. Okay, then um, if, I'm pausing now deliberately so that you can think about it. So yes, it's only one, so it's a character. C and F could be gender. For example, I'm going to say sheet gender. Um, oh, I forgot to put the data type of the Boolean there. Um, C gender of data type char. So I'm just going to make a space. I don't think I can go back. So this is now for the Boolean. Okay. So I'm going to say that again, be found. Um, and I'm going to say Boolean semicolon. Right. Um, here's a number. So I'm going to type there. So this is a whole number. So it's an integer. Um, let's say a year. Somewhere in history. Um, of data type integer. Okay. Then we have, I'm not going to repeat. I think you get the drift. Um, it's another decimal um, point. So it's got to be a real. Um, this one is a whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. However, it has a zero in the front, which means that it cannot be a number because the zero would fall away. So in this case, um, we would say here that is maybe S cell number. And it is also a string. Okay, and I think um, the following number, this one, it's quite a long number, but it has spaces in between. So it will also be a string. If that number would be all one, an integer, 
and th this is where I'm just going to mention it. I don't want to confuse you, but an integer can only carry so much digits. If we want to have bigger numbers, there's a data type called double or int64, which is a 64-bit integer, which is a much bigger number. Um, so I think any number bigger than 10 digits actually needs to be declared as um, a double or as int64, but because of the spaces, this is actually not a number, but a text. And then we have pi, pi 3.1425 or whatever, you are the math geniuses. Um, I simply press the pi button on the calculator, but it is a decimal um, point. So let's just write this for last sake. Um, we have here r pi, and that's a real. Okay, awesome. Um, that is the answers to our guided question. Um, they're all going to disappear now. And we have another one over here. So we have to study the following. S name, S surname, string, C gender, char, I integer, S email address, string, S mobile number, string, D pensioner, whether they are pensioner, yes or no. I order quantity, integer, R price, real. Okay, let's look at the questions. Identify different examples of variables from those provided above that meet the following requirements. A variable that contains a number without a decimal value. So obviously we'll look for the integer. So here we have I order quantity. B, variable that contains a special character. Okay, that will most probably um, some form of string. So um, yeah, we can, I order quantity, but uh, sorry, coming back to A, could also be IH because there's another integer. Um, variable that contains a special character, A special character could be, yeah, not C gender, I would say um, C, S email address perhaps, because you can do that with email addresses. I'm not sure with S name and S surname, but anything string can contain these um, special characters. A variable that contains a number with a decimal value, um, we need a real, so that's our price. A variable name that contains a singular, um, single character only, that will be a character, so that's C gender. Variable name that contains the value true or false, which is our Boolean, so that's B pensioner. And then a variable name that contains letters only. Hmm. Only letters, most probably your name or surname. Um, I can't think of anything else. Yes, it's either S name or S surname. Explain why S mobile number is declared as a string type because a mobile number a starts with a zero, so that's text, and B, um, we we don't do any calculations with that number, so it is string. B pension is declared as a Boolean type because most probably the question was asked, are you a pensioner? Yes or no? Um, and our price is declared as a real type because a price always has a decimal point, um, whether it's zero or something else, but we have two decimal places. All right, declaring components. Um, so when you place a component onto a form, Delphi automatically inserts the declarations in the type section. So over here, you will see if you open Delphi just now, or read open Delphi, which I'm going to show you. Um, the example below shows the components placed on the form. The component name appears on the left-hand side of the colon and the data type of the right hand side. So we have data types that are like Chinese to you yet, but never, nevertheless, these are also data types. So our components, they also have data types. Okay, so um, I want you to actually do example 3.1 on your own.
And then when you're done with it, you can do activity 3.3 and complete that for today. But before we go there, I just quickly want to bring up Delphi and I'm going to start a new. So those of you who have Delphi 10, you can click on File, New, and then it's the VC, um, VCL form um, that we are going to open. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. Okay, and we have a new form. If I place a button on the form, and I click on it, um, they were talking about the list of that. So every time I add something, so at the moment you can just say button one, and we have our procedure. If I add something else to our form, um, let's go to our design and add, I'm going to zoom in here a bit, um, maybe we're going to add an edit. Um, if I go to my form, here we have an edit. We can put that over there or right next to it. And if I go to my code here on the type, you have now we have the button as well as the edit. So variables for now, if you declare, we declare that on our procedure. So I'm quickly going to go back to our form and then we're clicking on the button. And then over here, we can now actually work what must happen on the click of that button. So our variables are declared be between after the procedure and before the begin. So I can write here var, that's the keyword, and then I indent my code. And I can say here now s name, and that's string, string. Okay, and I'm going to do something with that now. So, s name, and that colon equal is actually a declaration or an, an assigning sign. So, it means that s name on the left is receiving something on the right. So, what is it receiving? The value that's in the edit. So, my na name of the edit, I did not name it, I was a bad teacher, I did not rename my um, my components, but it's called edit one um, dot text. That's the property of the edit that actually contains the value that I'm typing in there, and I'm assigning that to my variable s name. And then we can later on do something with this. I can say, for example, um, show message um, your name is S name. Don't worry about, you know, the coding of this. We will get to there. But all that it does, it, it's displaying in a dialog box. Your name is, and then maybe I'm going to add a colon over there. And then we're adding our value of the variable to our display. So if I would run this. Let's quickly see if this actually runs. It does. Let's just zoom out and bring the form over. And I'm going to zoom in. If I press, if I type in a name, um, Mr. Schultz, and I'll press the button, your name is Mr. Schultz. All right, guys, I hope this is actually helping you to go through the work and I would like you to do the activity now. Thank you, guys.